It's all the way back to Friday night, the MCG, the Cats, they beat the Pies. And I'll tell you what, the Cats have got a great run home now. Hard to not see them playing top four football. Yeah, it is a good run home, and I thought they were unbelievable. Their season is amazing at the moment, Damo. It's three weeks ago, people were riding off the Cats, and now you could argue they're the most informed team in the competition the last three weeks. The way they've delivered, they've changed it up a little bit. Tom Stewart through the middle, they've got more power with Dangerfield back. Gary Rowan's had a huge presence, and we just saw them finish the game off really well. Is he Take us through, if you can, the perspective you've got on the Tom Hawkins absence as part of this resurgence of the Cats. Because there's an emotional element to that, that he's not part of what's happening and he may not be part of what happens come September if he doesn't get fit. And equally, there may be a decision to be made, does he come back in anyway? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that's all going to play out, the Tom Hawkins scenario. The one thing I will say is that they were struggling to win midfield centre clearances, stoppage clearances for four or five weeks in a row. And you could argue that Geelong got the best and most potent forward line. Well, that was when Dangerfield was also injured. When they're up and going, but you throw in Dangerfield, you get Stewart, you get a bit of power and speed back on the ball, and it's amazing how a forward line that looked like they couldn't get a touch now is the most informed forward line in the competition. So, so much of footy this season is if you, your centre bounce, your midfield works up and going, and I think hats off to all the measures to make the competition even, because every game you rock up to, you have absolutely no idea who's going to win this year. There's some great segments on the Sunday footy show. The quiz, you've got the deep dive, receipts, you've got Gender. Damo's animal <laughs> fact, TJ's time capsule. We didn't quite make the cutting room floor time and time again, but they all tune in for this. Well, haven't things changed at Collingwood? Because I always question whether it was authentic when they ran out on the ground and they're oh, smiling okay, and they're no. high-fiving and they're enjoying themselves. So let's have a look at some of this. So this round zero, look at the clapping, they're smiling <laughs> up and out. They just want a premiership. Everything is great. you got the tan, the sun's out. Here's round two. They love it. Look at the day. There's Darcy Moy. He loves it on King's birthday. Well, this is what they delivered on Friday night. It is a different-looking Collingwood side now. They're not smiling now. Let me tell you, they're in 11th position and they are not smiling. So was that fake? Was it authentic? They'd have to ask themselves that question. They're not coming from behind. That aura is gone. And part of it is because of Darcy Moore, who I've been hard on, but I said he plays one good game every six weeks. It may be less than that. It may be less than one good game every six weeks. How they have allowed Isaac Quainor to play on Jeremy Cameron when you've got Darcy Moore there who wants to be the loose or he wants to play on the least dangerous opposition forward. But that's so all well and good. Trying to get well, that's all well and good, Brownie, if you want to be the loose and you're impacting. It's not well and good when you're taking one intercept mark and having four kicks. And Jeremy Cameron, after the game to you, Lordo, says, oh, I, I couldn't believe that Isaac Quainor was on me, essentially. I'm paraphrasing there. But he was excited about that matchup. So either play Darcy Moore, give him a challenge to take the opposition's best player or send him forward which you know that he can do and they've got injuries forward or put him in the VFL to find some form I think it's almost at that level for the Collingwood captain who clearly is not smiling now Oh, nice work, Kano. Uh, Collingwood fans, get on to that one. Let's take a look at Sydney up against the Kangaroos. The SCG yesterday, it was a blitz. No Heaney, no worries. Yeah, it's just the power that they've got. So there's three goals I wanted to show that uh, they, they're just far superior to any other team in the comp. So this is the first one's Papley. So he gets four. The far part of the screen, he gets forward of Dawson. Dawson, you can't let him get goal side. So that was one that I loved. Chad Warner, uh, I know Damo was first to him, but he's on the far right of the Damo's screen. Man. Damo's man. He gets goal side here. The power when he comes through this ball, kicks goals. Not many in the comp can do that. And then Brody Grundy. I love this. This, this is centre bounce B, Tristan Sherry. And he, he's just a running machine, Brody Grundy. And he just keeps going. He doesn't get it the first time. He's tracking through the middle of the ground. Doesn't get used. They go out wide, but Grundy's still testing Sherry, who's still 15 metres off, can't go, and he picks it up and runs. I could have shown maybe five, six, seven of those goals, Brownie, where they're the most powerful side in the comp. No Isaac Heaney, as we know, but Mills and Parker came back into the Sydney lineup, and it must be said they played pretty well, particularly Parker, who came on as the sub. And when he kicked his first goal, you saw how popular he is at this club, and I tell you what, he's going to play a big part in September. I reckon you're right, Brownie. I think he is. I mean, it'd be hard to leave him out now. If you're picking between between him and Taylor Adams with what he brings and his attributes to go forward. There's Mills, who didn't have a big afternoon, but Parker's a sub, came on, had 13, kicked two goals, and he looks angry, and he looks determined mm. to not lose his place from here on out. Well, and the beauty about it is that they've had Mills and Parker out, who you could argue will be two of their most damaging players going forward this year, but they're rested 
they're fresh. And it makes a massive difference making a run into the finals. So I'm really fascinated to see how Sydney operate over the next few weeks. Yeah, and there may be an injury concern to Justin McInerney. Uh, we don't yet know the full diagnosis of what he suffered yesterday. It was off the ball and it was a, a knee injury where he just uh, fell at this moment, was taken off the ground and an ice applied to the, the back of the knee in question. There is a suspected PCL damage too at the club. will release details on that as the week unfolds. But he's such a key player to them, is he? Um, they don't want to lose him. But with those guys coming back for the first matches this year or first matches in some time, it's good cover. The way the ladder's gone, three games clear with seven to go. So they can just manage every mm, single player. It's a nice position to be, isn't it? Yeah.